again with the drawers. Welcome back to my shop and the channel. And uh, before we get started on this episode's project, which is starting to do the drawers, I want to do a little, 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 little discussion on dovetails from the period. So I want you to see this line on that I've drawn across these. Now these are cut by machine. That's why they've got the radius there. But that line across there, you can see that. When you watch people cut half line dovetails or rabbit half line dovetails, you'll note that they almost never violate that line. So when they're going at it with their dovetail saw, and they'll saw those down to where that line is and chop the rest out with a chisel. Our ancestors, not so much. So look at this picture. Please note on the sides of the, uh, the outsides of the, uh, of the front of this uh, drawer. See those cut lines? Take a closer look. See those cut lines? That's called, that's called over, overcutting or oh, some other word they use for it. Um, what they did is they took their dovetail saw and they started cutting in the angle here, but they kept lowering the saw to, to, to relieve more of the wood down here so they have less to chop out with a chisel. Customers didn't care, obviously, because I can't tell you how many drawers I've seen over the past three or four decades that had that overcut there. I, this, I've got a picture somewhere of a lock mortise in an 18th century chest, and there's overcuts to put the lock mortise in. The, for, the, for the lock mortise. So if you feel like you make a mistake by cutting into this wood, don't feel bad about it. Just go ahead and do it. So now let's get started. It is drawer building time. Um, I've cut all the parts not quite to finish size. That comes as we build them. Um, and as I as promised, I have put cherry on the bottom, if you see that in, in camera, of the drawer sides to reduce wear, reduce whatever. I published my first short. And amazingly, it's bumping up against 5,000 views. I, I don't get that. Anyhow, in the short, I demonstrated this. I built a prototype drawer assembly from pine, just plain old pine, uh, dovetailed to both ends. I've changed my mind about the rear. It's not going to be dovetailed. It'll be a rabbit joint. So anyhow, and then I test fit to make sure that my sizes are correct, that my everything else is a copacetic and it slides nicely and all that and it doesn't rack. So I, I, that's, that worked and that's, that's ready to go. Put this aside. What do I have here? I have sides, backs, and the fronts. The fronts, of course, are cherry. Um, the top drawers are small, so both fronts come out of here and the rest are the size that need to be. They'll be, they're just roughed and they'll be cut to size as I do the drawers. Now, I've ordered the hardware. It's not here yet. I don't know if it be, will get here in time for this video. Uh, and I'm not, even though it says it's three inch bore, I'm not going to drill the holes in the fronts until I have them in house to be absolutely sure they're exactly a three inch bore. You know, because if you drill the holes and they're off, then you got to get a mess with it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to build one, maybe two of these drawers, the top ones, and uh, to demonstrate the process. Again, it's dovetails and it's gluing and it's bottoms. Another concession to plywood on this build is going to be the drawer bottoms. I'm going to make them out of quarter inch plywood. Uh, the backs, the back of the cabinet will be, I'm hoping to do it with pine, but if I have to, I'll use plywood, but I want to use pine. Uh, so let's get started on a top drawer cut everything to fit, cut the rabbit, but the very first, and cut the, cut everything, so let me back up, cut to fit, make sure it's the right size, then the very first thing I do on the fronts is I cut the, um, the, the detailing I'm putting on the outside edges of each of the, of the drawers. In this case, it's going to be a, a step roundover, eighth inch step roundover, because this lip on the drawers is one quarter of an inch. I don't know if you can hear it, but the trash trucks are outside picking up trash right now. It's trash day. So let's get started first by getting the measurements correct, cutting the fronts, and then cutting the back, the sides and the backs. Now, interesting point is once I get the rabbits done, and I'll demonstrate this when I get the rabbits done on the back to fit inside here, that is the datum we take to, to cut the sides and the backs to the exact 
height they need to be because you want the dovetails to fit correctly and all that good stuff. Let's get started. Over at the router. All right. Um, I've set up the router now to do the, the, that stepped round over. I'm using the eighth inch round over bit, which I don't have anymore from the old company. I, years ago, I bought these at a woodworking show. They were like blue top thingies, nondescript brand, $79 for a whole passel of them. They weren't that great, but it got me started. I'm slowly replacing these with really be much better bits as I go along, as I need them. Mostly white sides, not a sponsor. So I've got the eighth inch bit in place. I've done a test cut on one of my uh, previous test pieces, which this is the round over, if you can see it there with a step. I was looking for a thumbnail uh, bit for the right size, but I couldn't find anything. Um, it's locked down and in place and everything's ready to go. Now, I'll bring the camera in in a second. The way you do pieces like this, repeating myself, do the end grain first, then do the side grain. And that way, if you get any blowout on the end grain, it'll be taken away when you do the side grain. So let's let's go ahead and uh, put on the earmuffs and um, and do some cutting of wood. So I've got the two fronts for the top drawers done with their stepped roundovers. Now I have to put the uh, spiral cut bit back in place to do the rabbits on the back of these. So let's get that done, and then we'll proceed on to the next step, which is start again. We're going to cut dovetails. I don't know if I, I don't know if I should show you that because I've done it on camera a bunch of times. But we'll cut the dovetails and start trying to fit the drawer up and we'll make one drawer, maybe two, I don't know, maybe one, maybe two, and we'll go from there. And there it is. I've got the uh, two front drawers cut out with the the V detail, V detail, roundover detail, and the half inch by one quarter inch rabbit all the way around it to fit inside the cabinet itself. And we're going to do a test fit before we do anything else. Yep, that's it. That's just the right amount of play I wanted in this thing. It's about a, maybe a little over a 32nd of an inch all the way around. So I've got a little bit room for, for movement, but it also gives you a nice fit to the drawer in the drawer pocket like I showed you with the, uh, with the prototype that I did. Um, now I need to measure this here, get an exact setup on the table saw, and, and rip out all the rest of the parts to this exact same width off camera. So I've ripped the sides to the exact width of the inside here. So those dovetail joints, if I set it up this correctly, will be nice and correct with no ups or downs, bumps or anything like that. The other thing I need to do is um, cut the back to the length. And um, I have to do an exact measurement for that because instead of using the dovetails in the back, um, we're, we're going to use a rabbit joint in the back with glue. And I'm going to put, just for giggles, I'm going to put some period nails in there. I've got a whole drawer full of period nails. I'll put some period nails in there. 
But off to the uh, off to the dovetail jig. Like I said, I don't know if I need to be record that because uh, I've got me using that thing in a variety of videos. The only thing I've changed is uh, is I I put uh, sticky back sandpaper on where the wood gets clamped in because I had an issue. I mentioned in an earlier video this was supposed to be 40 inches wide, uh, and it's uh, it's about three quarters of an inch shorter now because the big big pieces that I put in there for the top and the bottom, I wasn't aware of it, but when I put the base in and started working, it slipped down a little. Even though I had it real tight, I slipped down. And I wound up with dovetails being asymmetric, so I had to cut those side ends off of both pieces and redo those dovetails, so it's a little narrower than I originally had planned, but it doesn't matter. Things happen. So that I, I, put, I decided to go ahead and put in the sticky paper, sandpaper in there, so it has better grip on the workpiece when you've got it clamped in, and it won't move at all. So let's, I'm going to go over there and then now start cutting these out, and then do a fit, and then we'll do a. Uh, well, I got to do the, I got to do the, uh, I got to do the, the dado in, in, in the sides and in the back. No, the back's not going to get a dado. In the sides and in the front, to accept the um, the plywood. Time to assemble a drawer. Um, groove and dovetails are cut on the front. Grooves and dovetails are cut on the side. I made a mistake on one of these and I can fix it, but that's okay. We can fix our mistakes. Same one here. The back has been cut narrow because it's going to ride over the, bat, the bottom of the drawer and they're going to fasten it that way to keep it in place. So, um, time to start assembling. I need some glue. That's over here. Um, I'm sure some, some folks are right now saying, why are you doing that on your table saw? Well, because I'm going to get a piece of paper, I think, and put it down. But it's a flat surface, and it gives me a great you know, indexing surface for putting things together. If I only had a you know, room to build a, uh, a flat table, ultra flat table here that I could use for things like this, that would be great. Maybe in the next shop. So let's start with this. Notice how I rarely have everything I need all together at one time. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to fasten this side. Yep, do that one first. A little bit of glue, doesn't need a lot, in the sockets on the pin board. And I'll, I'll get a piece of it. Okay. And the groove has to match the groove for the uh, for the bottom. And dovetails. So let's do the other one. This is the one where I made the mistake, and it's a little loose. But like I said, this, this is fixable. Okay. The fun part is getting the, the uh, plywood in there because it's, um, it's a little flexible. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to clamp that in place because I said it's a little loose. And as we as we know, we can fix these things as we have the technology. That there holds it in place, nice and tight. Give it a little bit of down bang. Okay, now we got that together. Oh, uh, I'm going to pin this in with some glue, and then I'll put those nails in later that I talked about, the antique nails. This is the fun part. Be 
because this is square, it will square up the drawer, I hope. There, that's down and in place. Cool. And then this is going to go here. And it will get pinned and also put some clamps on it too. Uh, and then I'll flip this down uh, with the lip hanging out over here, put some weight on it to make sure I get it nice and uh, nice and uh, flat. Okay, get, get a clamp on that. My big Georgies. Okay, nice and tight. Feels kind of nice and square already. Okay, and that can fasten the bottom later, a little later. Oops, that was bad. Okay, that's better. All right, now, I want to put a weight on it, just a little bit of a weight on it. So hopefully when we trial fit this, it's going to work great. Um, let's let this uh, glue cure, and then we'll give it a shot. Alrighty then, let's uh, uncage this thing. Uh, this is only drawer number one. I think we have a winner. Let's uh, give it a test bit. How about up close? I think we have a winner. Drawer number one. To paraphrase myself when I was building Mars Armoire, seven more to go. I'm going to build these off camera. Still waiting for the hardware. I got a notice today, an email that, that they were shipped today. We'll see when it gets here. Uh, either way, when it gets here, then we'll, we'll mount the hardware up because I should have the whole, I should have these all done by then. If it comes when they say it's going to come. If it comes earlier, I'll just finish these and then we'll, then we'll put the hardware on. The uh, crown molding, which I haven't designed yet, and the base, which is going to have bracket feet, are the, probably the last things I'll do before we go ahead and do the finish. And the finish is going to be similar, almost identical to what I did last time. It's going to be a coat of shellac, uh, at, uh, on top of which will be white on polyurethane. Uh, but it's getting cold outside, so I have to shoot it in here, which means I have to build a little spray booth thingy out of PVC pipe and plastic sheeting. Maybe. We'll see. So, we'll end this episode here, and uh, until next time, make great things out of wood. See ya.